Hi everyone, I'm starting this video off quietly because I had an issue with my audio settings in the last video which caused it to be unusually quiet so I'm giving you a warning before the full audio, the full volume audio starts uh, so if you're watching these videos in order or you know watching the playlist uh, please Turn down your headphones and or speakers because this this video should be back to what's uh, more typical audio levels for me. So I'm going to do a countdown and then unpause. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi everyone. I apologize for the issues and for the last video being so weirdly quiet. Uh, I'm, I was messing around with audio settings as I do probably too much. I should just find something that works for me and leave it there. But of course over time volumes get changed and there are so many variables that go into recording audio through my microphone, you know, so many, so many volume levels to set at different, you know, system levels and OBS levels and the actual, you know, the gain knob on the microphone itself, you know, there's so many, uh, so many variables and I want to get it, I think this is about where I want it, so the noise gate should prevent you from hearing me breathing when I'm not talking. It might pick up the breathing occasionally, but the uh, overall audio level should be good. I tried adding a compressor in the previous video because I thought it made the audio sound cleaner, and it did, but what I didn't realize is that the relative volume levels I was seeing in the audio mixer did not reflect the actual audio levels of the video itself, and I recorded a test video, but... I, I didn't realize I have to import it into Audacity so I can see the you know the actual volume level and not like just the relative volume level. It's a whole thing. So uh, that, that's been your behind the scenes uh, technical snafu. So uh, I do have a little bit of unfinished business before uh, I'm done with level four. Because there was one specific room that puzzled me that I want to try bombing, and I don't have bombs. So let me find... I don't have my, uh, my manual up. Well, let me just fix that now. I have my map. It's taped, it's taped to the wall to the right of me. So, because it's, t it's two sheets of paper, um... I think last time I said the world is 8x8, and I misspoke. The world is actually 16x8, uh, but I, I can only fit 8x8 on one sheet of paper, unless I wanted to squash it and make it look ugly. So I printed it across two sheets of paper and uh, taped it up to the wall, which is good for taking notes, but for just quick reference, uh, the, uh, the PDF is probably better. All right. Of course, the PDF doesn't have my notes on it, so I don't know which shops sell bombs. I know where the shops are, or where the caves are. Okay, so I need to go across the bridge, and then west, and then north a couple screens, and I should be able to, to get some bombs there. Yeah, that dungeon had a disappointing number of, of bombs. There were not very many enemies very many enemies that drop stuff. And I think that's just because most of the enemies were enemies that split or enemies that can be boomeranged. So you have the the gargoyle, which splits into bats, and then the bats can be boomeranged. And I think uh, in both of those situations, the, those types of enemies never drop anything. 
uh, the slimes did start dropping things because I got the better sword so I can now defeat them in one hit. So I assume once I get the master sword, hopefully the gar gargoyles will behave the same way. And I feel like there was another annoying enemy that never dropped anything. But no, I, th I think that level was just gargoyles, bats, and slimes. Oh my. Alright, let's see if I can remember where that room was. I think, I think it's right here. I know it wasn't far from the entrance. Oop. Yeah, this is a, just a weird, twisty maze. With nothing in it and nothing dropped when I defeated all the enemies. No, or nothing appeared. And the other possibility is that a secret opens if I move one of the blocks. That, uh, I, I tried several of the blocks in various directions, but it's possible that I just missed the one that actually does something. And it, w it would have to be one that doesn't block you from getting to the exit. I think I tried most of them that would, uh, that would be feasible, but I just want to try bombing these walls just in case. And it's possible that it's just nothing. Could just be a dead end room. Uh, yeah, I seriously doubt. Like, I don't know if I've ever seen a bombable wall to the south. I mean, I assume the the room north of the snake's eye can be bombed to the south, but I don't think I actually tried it because I didn't have any bombs. Alright, this room just looks very suspicious, and I'm trying to like systematically push these. But it's possible I missed a, a couple combinations. I don't know, whatever. I don't think there's- I don't think there's anything there. And any good exploration game should have, you know, a dead end or two. And I think this game does a good job of balancing dead ends with, uh, with exploration. Because, you know, if you find something at, at the end of every, every path you take, then eventually, you know, the thrill of exploration kind of wears off because, you know, you just get something every single, every single time. So, it's not, it's like you're not unearthing the treasure, you're just kind of checking it off the list. Which, it, which is a very kind of silly distinction to make. Um, but it can be important for psychological enjoyment. Alright, well, I think the next step would be Dungeon 5, which is way at the top of the map. That's the secret one that I uncovered by going up, up the mountain. Just taking a quick look at the map to see if there's anything, anything else I should do. I do have a hint to meet the old man at the grave, and I do see on the map approximately where the grave is. Where the graves are. Um. Oh. Okay, so if I cross the little... There's like a one tile wide river. North of where level one is. Which I can cross now that I have the ladder. So maybe I should check that out before I go to level five. Because I already... You know, I, I have the hint, and I have the thing that I need to get there now. So, yeah, I will try that. I will make my way back to the level 1 area. The the old hollowed-out tree stump. In which I fought the unicorn dragon. 
Oh, simpler times. That last dungeon was kind of a beast, huh? It was definitely the biggest chunk of time on the timeline there. When you look at the s segments that YouTube divides the video into based on my timestamps, Dungeon 4 is far and away the longest one. Although D Dungeon 3 was pretty lengthy too. I wish there was a clear indication that I wasn't hitting the dragon's head. Like, the sound effect that it made was ambiguous. It didn't sound like pain or a miss. Like, I, I wish when I attacked the, the dragon's head after it departed from its owner's uh, torso. Do dragons have torsos? I don't know what, what part of the dragon that is. But once a head started flying around and angrily spitting fireballs at me. This is just a secret to everyone, right? Yeah. Once that happened, like I wish once you attacked that head, it made more of a ping sound. Which is more unambiguously a miss. But that's okay. Alright, so I have kind of two options here. If I want to get to the, the cemetery, I want to take the south path. The north path offers... Well, I, I guess they both sort of connect. Although there is some stuff up to the north. But I don't... Uh, like, if I, if I go up that ladder, there's a section of the map that I don't really... I think I have any reason to go to yet. Total guess. Had no idea that was there. I was like, hey, flat wall. Oh, this guy. Well, I could uh, abuse safe states and safe scum this and get enough rupees to buy the ring, but I'm going to do it honestly. As, as honestly as possible. We didn't have safe states on the Nintendo, so if I have to if I have to do that, that's you know whatever. But let's see if I can do it without without cheating first. Hey. Damn, minus forty? That is a huge risk. I think I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Oh, centaurs. I don't know if if the reds reds are the weaker or the stronger of the two. Usually reds are weaker. Alright, shields shields and bombs, basically. Alright, let me let me jot that down real quick. One moment. Okay, I'm back. I moved slightly, so it's a more obvious uh jump cut. Cause otherwise it might be a little jarring. Um, so yeah, the reason I wrote that down isn't because I'm necessarily going to come to this shop if I need to buy that stuff, because there are more convenient shops. It's more so I don't... If, if there's something that I'm looking for that I don't know where it is, I'm prone to check any area that I don't have notes for. So if I don't have notes for that cave, there's the danger that I'm going to say, oh, I haven't checked that cave. I should go see if the thing that I need is there. And, uh, you know, it's more, more explanatory than something I think will actually be useful. All right, let's check each of these living statues. Used to this routine. Ah. Took a break, my, my boomerang timing is off. There we go. Now that's a stunner.
Okay. I doubted that there there would be two secret unlocks on the same screen. But you have to check. <gasps> Whoa. Wow, I had no idea that was just gonna be something under one of these random statues. Like I thought for sure that would be something in a cave that I have to bomb or uh a bush that I have to burn. I'm, I'm very grateful to find that because... I mean, as tedious as this can be, it's a million times better than having to check every bush and, and bomb every flat wall because it doesn't require resources. You know, if I'm bombing every visible wall, I have to eventually make make a trek back somewhere and buy more bombs. Speaking of which... It just occurred to me that the reason... Like, they might have put a bomb shop there, or a shop that sells bombs there, for the explicit purpose of making it easier for me to get bombs to check other walls. Which, you know, may be a far-fetched idea. Would they put a door right next to a ladder like this? I'm glad I don't, I don't have to be as exact with the bombs as I was worried I would be. Another problem with my printed map Wait a sec. Okay, this is just a different type of living statue. Weird. Uh, another problem with my printed map is the contrast makes it very difficult to see those blue ladders, which is a problem. I maybe should have done some, uh, some photoshopping or adjustments before I printed it out. Oh well. So this is the same type of statue, just different form, different color palette. Okay, two bombs. Do I want to waste them here? Sure, why not? Where else am I gonna waste them? Dang, I'm getting lucky with these. Oh. Another old lady. One moment while I annotate. Okay. Map has been marked. I actually didn't know that there were multiple old ladies. My memory... You know, as flawed as flawed as it is, uh, only only remember the one. So interesting. In the overworld, you can push stuff without clearing the screen first. I guess it would be kind of necessary. Because there's no way I can kill, you know, the centaurs here and the centaur over there unless I could shoot swords. Ah, so, so, pickups do blink out of existence, eventually. Like, I was pretty sure that was the case. But not 100%. Alright, so we got the first fast travel point here. Um... I don't think I need to mark these on the map, because... Well... I thought they were all... Uh, surrounded by four rocks like that. Okay. Alright, one moment. Okay, and I'm going to go on ahead and uh, uncover the other two, and then annotate those as well. Alright. 
one moment. Okay, so this one is actually not a part of the world that I've uncovered yet. Like, it's not on the map at all. So I'm, I'm going to wait until I, I have a more definitive idea of where that is, because I, I don't want to put it in the wrong square. Okay, so only two of the fast travel locations are surrounded by rocks. Not, not all four of them. Good to know. Alright, this one should be on my map, so one sec. Okay, that's all of them. Well, except for the one up in the top right hand corner. So I want to get back to the area I was with the centaurs. Here we go. Oh, they don't respawn. That's nice of them. That's nice of them not to do. Okay, so I want to continue going west. And then if this is if this isn't like an infinitely re repeating thing, uh which it, does, it doesn't look like it will be. Then that should circle back around to the graveyard. Can I block these swords with my magic shield? I don't. I can. Good. Eh, centaurs aren't so tough. The blue one might have been tough if I tried to fight it before I had the magic shield. Alright, so this has to be, what, like Dungeon 6? Yes. Excellent. It's possible that the thing on my map that I thought was a graveyard isn't actually a graveyard. I can't tell if the white things on the map are tombstones or more of these living statues. Uh, anyway... I'm gonna annotate this real quick. Filling in a blank, which is which is always exciting. Okay, now to systematically check each of these statues, cause I gotta. So is this gonna be like that level five one and just be like an alternate entrance to the same place? It is. I don't understand. I, I don't think there's any item I can get that would change change the way I interact with that. It's very strange. Again, I don't think there's going to be two secrets on the same screen. But that assumption might turn out to be incorrect. There's no real elegant way to communicate that to the player. If that is how how it works. I mean it you know, it's somewhat logical. At least for a game of this scope. But like, there, there's no text, there's no hint an NPC could give that would communicate that. I am whiffing on each of these boomerang attempts. Jeez. There we go. And just, just be sure. I, I have a cough coming up, so I'm going to mute or pause. Okay, fun times. Got that out of my system, took a big old drink of water.
Don't you hate when you get that tickle in the back of your throat and you just know a big cough is coming and it's it's all you can do to prolong it as long as possible or delay it I suppose okay so how do these tombstones work I do remember that touching them summons a ghost an unkillable ghost Oh, do these work like the the propeller monsters? No. Do I have to like touch each of the graves until the secret one becomes apparent? Oh, I wonder if I left that first ghost on the screen. If that would have served as like the master ghost. And then defeating that would have defeated all the other ghosts on the screen. Let's find out. That would be an interesting mechanic. Oh yeah. Oh, and they can all drop stuff. Wow. That is really clever. Oh man. <laughs> if I had this clock before I killed the master ghost, I could just clean up here, but of course there's no way to get the clock before you kill the master ghost. Because <clears throat> it only drops when you kill an enemy. So that that is really clever. It's like a cool little risk reward challenge. It's like how many how many of these unkillable ghosts do you want flying around? And the ghost you know, the Master Ghost takes a pretty long time to kill. And you have to keep it, like, separate in your mind from all the other ghosts. Huh. That is a cool thing. <clears throat> like, I, I remember that you could summon ghosts, but I didn't remember anything about how, how it worked. I wonder how long it takes the Master Ghost to respawn. Like, I wonder if I have to go into, like, a dungeon and come back out before they'll be back. So this is, like, a totally intentional, like, grinding area, right? Like, that is, that is very well thought out. Of course, the question remains, where is the old man that I have to meet? At the grave. It's always possible that hint was a lie. But I'm going to thoroughly check the cemetery anyway. I'm going to go ahead and touch each of these tombstones to see if maybe one of them is, like, movable rather than something that summons enemies. <clears throat> I, th I think these aren't moving just because you can't summon a ghost from, from the same grave twice. Alright, how far do I want to push my luck? Oh god. Too far. I shouldn't play God like that. But look at how lucrative it is to play God. Ow. Or maybe you, you can summon... Oh no, you, you can totally summon multiple ghosts from the same tombstone. So wait, was... Is this one special somehow? Or no? Huh. Weird. Okay, well that is... Those four sections. Alright, so... <clears throat> this ladder back here... 
leads down. It looks like looks like some kind of dock on the map. But I'm not sure. Ah, so much flat wall I could be bombing. And again, I have no idea if it's possible to increase your bomb count beyond 8 in, eight in this game. That might be an innovation that they added later <clears throat> in the series. Up upgrading your bomb bag. Wait. Are there multiple ladders here? Oh no, okay. I see what happened. Or I see what it is. <clears throat> so if I go right from here, that takes me back to the Lost Woods. And from there... There's not a lot of places to go. There's a fairy fountain. There's a bunch of rocks I could try pushing. And there's a cave I haven't been in. But I would have to like wrap around uh, a big area. So I'm going to continue exploring the cemetery area. It looked like there were a couple other paths I could take. See if I can find this old man they're talking about. Aha. Oh. I haven't mastered using this. But I, I know where it is now. Okay, uh, let's figure out where this is relative to the rest of my map. So if I go east here, that leads me back to that wall where I bombed and found the old lady, right? Yeah, and the ladder up to level 6. So it's the square of map just to the west of level 6. Alright, I'm going to make a few notes here, so I'm going to pause real quick. Okay, so I marked each, each section of the map that contains part of the cemetery, and I noted which grave it was specifically so I don't have to try every one. Uh, three across and two down. And I think that is it for this part of the map. <clears throat> also these, these ghosts respond pretty quickly, which is nice. I think I just had to leave like the main cemetery area and come back. Okay, so I th I think I'm going to <clears throat> uh, do the do the Lost Woods area. Try pushing those rocks and go to that cave that I haven't been in. And I'm kind of postponing starting level five right away because I don't know if I'm ready for it. Um, I feel underpowered after level 4, and I won't be able to get the Master Sword until I have some some number of heart, heart containers, which will involve, you know, fighting more bosses. But wait, there are heart containers in the world too, right? Because if it's just one after each boss, that's not going to be enough to, to fill up the whole thing. Hmm. <clears throat> I, I predict a lot more... ...grinding and, and bombing walls in the future. Alright, I actually did not go the way I intended to. Um... <clears throat> I got turned around. Because... I want to just kind of go and not check the map every few seconds. Maybe, maybe I should just have the map open in a window <clears throat> instead of minimizing it every time. Like, it's kind of small, but it still 
big enough to read the labels and stuff. And I can zoom in and only focus on like the, the relevant part of the map where I am. Yeah, let, let's do that. That'll make this way easier. Okay, so right now I am right below the fast travel point. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know why I thought I wanted to go this way. I really hope there is a way to increase the bomb bag size. Because if my maximum is 8, doing the whole loop of, of bombing and buying does not sound very fun. These centaurs ain't shit. Ooh, half horse. So scary. You know, that famous... <clears throat> oh! <clears throat> I stand corrected. Maybe, maybe the deal with the centaurs isn't that they... They're hard to kill. Maybe you just have to be really careful not to be damaged by them. Okay, uh, where is the closest fairy fountain? That, that should probably be, like, the first thing I do after every death on the overworld, is find a fairy fountain and get my health back. Um, so I can cross that river now without taking the bridge, so all I, all I have to do is go west, west, uh, west, west, north, west, west, north, north. Uh, that's kind of a hassle. Oh well. <clears throat> maybe I'll, maybe I'll find a, a fairy or enough hearts that I don't have to do the whole route. We are inching ever, ever closer to acquiring the blue ring. Which is very exciting. That 50 rupees that I won, <clears throat> that was uh, fortuitous. And I just realized I can totally cheat that and not make it look like I'm cheating because there's no music in, in the, the caves. So if I paused <clears throat> and just save stated until I won, there would be no way to tell because you know, I mean, there might be, like, a, a small gap in the, the narration. But as far as anyone watching is concerned, that's just, you know, a natural pause in, uh, in my, in my speech, <clears throat> which I do frequently. I just realized I'm going to have to try pushing every rock now, too. In every direction. Or, or is it in every direction? Like, can rocks be pushed? M maybe they, they don't work the same way as the blocks in, in dungeons. Maybe you can push them from any direction. Well, the best way to test that would be one of the fast travel points. And there's one just to the east here. That's, that's information that I'm going to need to have because it will reduce the amount of time I spend fruitless, fruitlessly pushing rocks by 75%. If that is the case, which I hope it is. God, I hope it is. I mean, they don't work the same way as the dungeon blocks in regards to, you know, you, you don't have to kill all the enemies first. So hopefully it works this way as well. Oh, thank god. Oh, that is such a relief. Okay, so I only have to try pushing every rock one direction. What happens if I try pushing it towards the stairs? Nothing? Okay. That makes sense. Oh, I have the map up and now I can't see OBS, so I'm paranoid that I'm actually recording. Okay, 
when it, when I pause it, the OBS icon in my system tray changes to a pause icon, so I don't need OBS open to know whether it's paused. Which I thought was the, I, I thought that was the case, but I wanted to, to make sure because I don't I don't use that feature that much. Huh. This is totally a uh, Mandelbrot set. Or a Mandelbro. I'm never certain of the pronounce pronunciation. I think it's Mandelbrot. Because it means almond bread. And brat means bread in German. It's it's not French. So I think it's Mandelbrot. Um, which is like a you know, the world's most famous fractal. Look it up if you don't know what that is. It's neat. Okay, I don't have to go this way at all. I just wanted to test my, my rock pushing theory. I mean, it's not exactly the Mandelbrot set. It's just reminiscent of it. So I can't just cross that river because it's two tiles wide rather than one. Which means I have to make my way to the bridge. Okay, well, no fairy, no fairy fountain or fairy lake is necessary now. Wonder how many hearts I need to get the master sword. I mean, I should probably check after every heart container I find, just to be sure. I really hope it's not going to turn out that some rocks do need to be, be, be pushed in a specific direction. I don't think they would do that. That would be very unwise not to make that a consistent thing. And as I'm playing it, I'm realizing just what a super well-designed game this is in so many ways. Like, which shouldn't be a surprise. Um, you know, it is Shigeru Miyamoto. Uh, well, one of the world's greatest game designers. But the original Zelda gets... It gets a bad rap. Because so much of the needed information is in the manual and on the map. It gets a bad rap for being too abstruse. Which, there are things about it that are, that are too abstruse. But I'm confident that with... With the original documentation, I don't think I'll have to consult a walkthrough. At least, that's what I hope. <clears throat> done and done. Thank you for the hint. Okay. So, I just crossed the bridge. So I want to keep going this way to make my way back to the Lost Woods. Hey, some bombs! First time I've seen bombs drop in... I don't know how long. I'm only 25 rupees away from... The Blue Ring. The Red Ring of Death, the Blue Ring of Life. Except they're both... <clears throat> they're both Rings of Life in this game. I forgot to mention this when I looked it up in the manual in the previous video, but the red ring, uh, the, the blue ring reduces the amount of damage you take by 50%, and uh, the red ring <clears throat> reduces it by 75%. So when you have the red ring, you only take a quarter of the damage you normally would. Which means it kind of sucks that you don't get it until the very, very last dungeon. I mean, at that point, most of the super difficult monsters <clears throat> are in your past. I mean, other than, you know, the ones that I'm sure they introduce in level 9. Well, I have 8 bombs. No reason to keep them in my inventory. Nice. Oh, will this put me over the edge? It does. Wow. Maxed out my rupees. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
So I want to do that before I do anything else because I don't want to be picking up rupees that don't contribute to the total. So is there a faster way than just walking? I don't think so. <clears throat> all, all of the fast travel points are pretty far out of the way. But it's not too far. Alright, this should be the Fairy Lake, right? Yeah. Which means I just need to go east and then north twice. <clears throat> Wait. Oh, are these both fairy fountains? Oh, I thought this one was going to be different because... Oh, this isn't... Oh, right, there's no fairy. So I do remember this. Um, eventually I'm going to get a whistle and I have to play the whistle here and that opens the the path to level 7. Which means I know where all of the dungeons are now except for the ninth one. And I do know where the ninth one is, it's just not something that I've uncovered on, on the map yet. Um, I guess that's knowledge that has stuck with me or has been reiterated. Um, because that is maybe the most abstruse element of this game. Uh, finding the hidden dungeons. And some of them are... Easier to find than others. Um, like uh, level 8 I would say it's pretty easy to find because that one bush sticks out. It's very conspicuous. I don't know if there are any in-game hints that tell you to play the flute at this lake. Um, there are some hints on the map. Uh, let's see how, how specific it gets. Okay, the mysterious sealed entrance to the level 7 labyrinth is in the brown dead forest. Go to the farthest west fountain and do something special. Right. <clears throat> yeah, they, they refer to it as a fountain instead of a lake, which is, which is interesting. In the map they call them springs, which makes more sense. It's like a, you know, like a healing spring. So... I mean, I guess you would probably come here based on this hint and you would just try everything. You know, you would burn every bush and eventually you, you would try playing the flute. And you might get another hint about the flute at some point in the game. The flute, the whistle, the the recorder as the, the intro scroll. Scroll? Scroll refers to it as. And then it says use the candle to burn trees and find the hidden entrance to the level 8 labyrinth. Did that. An old man who lives near the ocean can tell you which tree in the green forest covers the entrance. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think I've found him yet. The two huge rocks high on Death Mountain are known by the people as Spectacle Rock. Yeah, there is one, <clears throat> one screen that has two large boulders. And uh, so that's a pretty straightforward hand. Just bomb both of them. You know, they both have flat... Uh, you know, the lower edge of them are flat. So, ideal... Yeah, pretty straightforward hint that you, that you have to bomb that. <clears throat> and then uh, five and six are just uh, well, the old lady gives you the hint to go up up the mountain, so that's level five. And then six is just it's not hidden; it's just not not on your map. So they really thought about like <clears throat> how much information they should give the player. Like, they don't tell you everything, they give you enough to figure stuff out for yourself. Like, you can you can tell that they put a whole lot of thought into it. And it's a shame that so much of this is hidden in the documentation. But I guess there was only so much, so much text that they could fit in the cartridge. Alright, so I want to go south, and then east, east, north, north. <clears throat> It kind of reminds me of the old gold box D&D games, which uh, Morris Draconis did a stream of 
Pool of Radiance. Hopefully he gets back to it. I find that stuff really interesting. And I find those games incredibly hard to play, interface-wise. So it's it's fun to watch someone someone play them. Um, but they're, they're kind of infamous for a lot of text being in the journal rather than in the game. And it's because of the very specific way that engine was designed. So... Okay, so a blog that I read called The CRPG Addict is a huge fan of the Goldbox games. Um, they are among his favorite RPGs ever, and it's a great <clears throat> it's a great blog in general. I, I recommend it, even though his opinion of The Legend of Zelda was not super glowing, but, you know, this isn't a CRPG, so it makes sense that he wouldn't like it. Um... But those, the way those games were designed, they were... So Pool of Radiance came out at a really weird time. Uh, it came out in 1988, which means... Sorry for, for the weird little tangent here, um, but I, I find this really interesting. So Pool of Radiance, the first Goldbots game, came out for IBM PCs, which is probably the, the version people played the most. But it also came out on the Apple II. Um, <clears throat> it's only supported by Apple II's with 128K of RAM, which is like the Apple IIc. Uh, I mean the Apple IIe if you get the RAM expansion, uh, the Apple II GS. Um, so, I, I mean, 1988, the Apple II was pretty long in the tooth for everything but the education market, but they still wanted to support it, so the engine was made for both, you know, IBM PC and the Apple II, and other 8-bit computer platforms like the Commodore 64, and I, th I think there was, uh, like an Amiga version? Yeah, there was an Amiga version, but that would have been later, I think. Anyway, um, so the Apple II, even with 128K of RAM, was not a very capable machine. So, you had to be very efficient with how you used graphical data in that game and the the sprites and the portraits and the maps are all way more com com complex than anything you would see in like a game like uh, Ultima 4 or <clears throat> you know other sort of contemporary uh, computer role playing games so because the graphics were so much more complex, they had to really pare down the amount of text in the game, and, and, and that's why it uses an all uppercase font, and uh, you know, all capital letters, and that's why at so many points in the game, may, maybe not Pool of Radiance, uh, it might not have had that much text, but definitely later games in the series, you know, they would say, you meet an NPC, turn to journal page, you know, 94 and read paragraph 3 or whatever <clears throat> and and that's point of criticism which you know is legitimate that it's not a great experience and it's because that first game maybe the first couple games targeted the apple II, that even as late as like 1992 they were still hampered by that same en engine and they were still you know so limited because the engine just wasn't built as built to support more uh, data than that, and uh, it kind of ruined those games. Well, I mean, not ruined. Like many of those games are beloved by you know lots of people, but it it limited what they could do for like nine or ten games because they targeted the Apple II. I, I found that really interesting. Anyway, story time is over. The time for upgrading my defenses is now defenses defenses i don't know why i said it like that upgrading my defenses wait why did i bring that up in the first place oh because of the amount of documentation the amount of information you need that's in the manual and the map and not actually in the game Wow, 
wow, that took a long time to take down. Alright, so that should reduce the amount of damage I take by 50%. Yes! I, I was wondering why I was still green, because I thought getting the rings changed your ap appearance. But yeah, getting the blue ring gives you this sweet silver tunic. Which is totally, like, anathema to how people think of Link. Like, his green tunic and hat is so iconic. Oh, I wonder what color I'll turn once I find the red ring. Okay, well, I'm really, really glad that I went on this whole little exploratory venture before level 5, because with this, I should be much more survivable. Uh, let's see. Which screen is this? Okay, I see where I am. <clears throat> so I want to go... Um... South... Okay. So I, I can't go through the Lost Woods. I should verify that first because the Lost Woods are right here. If I, if I go south here, I'm just going to keep going south forever, right? Yeah. I mean, unless it's like the thing with the mountain where... You have to go a certain number of times before it finally lets you through. Which I don't think that's the case here. I, I think it's just going to be an endless loop. See, I think a better solution for the, for the gold boss games would be instead of stay, staying in graphics mode for the entire game, when you have a big text dump, it, it should just switch to text mode. Because if the data was stored <clears throat> as, you know, text, you know, ASCII text, rather than graphical data, and, uh, and that's the other thing, is, like, all of the text was, like, hard-coded. Which was a really weird way to do it, and like a commenter on the blog, I think I've tried that bush before, like multiple times, but I will try it again. Like a commenter talked about it, like basically every screen in the game is like a map, like a, like a combat map or something, just with like different stuff overlaid on it. I, I I'm not explaining this like anywhere close to accurately. But w whatever decision they made means that the text is hard coded, which which means they couldn't like they, they couldn't just like put sp have a routine that like puts sprites for the text on the screen like they're all saved as bitmaps, and that might be the thing that they had to do because it was on the Apple II. Um, like there might not, I think there just wasn't a way to do sprites. Like I think it all had to be bitmaps. All right, so this was the the cave uh, I talked uh, the the cave I mentioned that I haven't been to, and I can't afford. And I assume it'll be the same as last time, where she only talks for the largest amount of money. All right, I'm going to uh, pause this real quick and just cough and make a couple notes. OBS, uh, when you right click on the icon in the system tray, uh, there's no pause option. I have to actually bring it up. Sorry, one moment. Okay, I'm back. <clears throat> I marked hints on the map here. Hang on. I, I should write down how many rupees I need. All right. Hence 50, so <clears throat> the next time I have 50 rupees and I'm in this area, I'll, uh, I'll give it a look. It's probably something I already, already know, um, but it might be a hint to, like, getting a heart container or something. Never know. So... <laughs> How... 
having having these caves that I f find by bombing is, is throwing me off because unlike the caves you don't uncover by bombing, they're not on the map. So <clears throat> I have to look for a second and, and think, wait, is this actually the screen that I'm on? Yeah, it is. Okay. Maybe I should have come up with a way to annotate the, the PDF map instead of printing it out. I don't know if that would be better or worse. I mean, if I'm pausing the video every time anyway, it doesn't... Probably doesn't matter that much. <clears throat> okay, anyway. I think I'm about ready for level 5. And I don't know if this will be a super long video compared to the last one. It might only go 2 hours instead of almost 3. It depends on how long it takes me to be level, level 5. Um... I don't anticipate doing more than one dungeon in this video. <clears throat> wow, I got hit and I didn't even take damage. Did you see that? Incredible. But I did a lot of non-dungeon stuff in this video and I, I feel pretty, <clears throat> pretty proud of that. I mean, not, not proud of, you know, not doing dungeons, you know, that's whatever, but, you know, I, I'm proud that I thought things through, and I realized <clears throat> that I'm underprepared, and I went to explore a couple leads before just diving right into level 5 and getting my butt kicked. <clears throat> you know, I was patient, and I thought things through. I don't know why I went in there. I know it's nothing. <clears throat> Alright, so... There is one... Well, actually, there are a couple directions I haven't explored. That are sort of on the way to level 5. Um, <clears throat> or, or in the same general vicinity. I don't know, I don't know if I want to do, do that yet. Maybe I'll see how bad level 5 is. And then if it's if it's super rough, even with my equipment, <clears throat> I'll explore some more of the map. Uh, let's see. Where, where am I? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, I know the way. Have time stopping clocks been a thing in mini Zelda games? I know it was a thing in Link's Awakening. The Game Boy version anyway. Um <clears throat> It wasn't a clock, it was like a seat or something? Or it was something... Like, there were a few like temporary temporary power-ups that only dropped from enemies. There was like a, something that made you faster, and... I think there was something that stopped time, too. I might be misremembering. Also, I think there was something like that in... Link Between Worlds. Or may <clears throat> maybe Link Between Worlds is the one that I'm thinking of. Um, so that's the desert area. I haven't really explored that section that much yet. Um, yeah, there there are a few parts of the map that I can just go and check out what's there. Like, across that river and, and up that ladder. That's one of them. <clears throat> But, uh, I think I've done enough world, world wandering for now. Oh god, I just realized, now that I have the ladder, every single, like, face of this mountain is a, is a potential bombing spot. Because I can, I can get right up to the wall now. Oof. Oofa doofa. Like, I don't think they would... Wait. What? 
because my my ladder doesn't work here. <clears throat> I guess because this this part of the river is technically a wall, not a river, because uh, that's how they had to hide a door there. Boy, these prices look reasonable now. Yeah, that's what it is. <clears throat> okay, well. No worries. Lots of rocks to try pushing. I don't think there's going to be much, but... You know, it doesn't take long to check. I assume. I didn't want to get in a fight. <clears throat> I just wanted to check that mysterious staircase. See if it does something different now for some reason. No, it doesn't. Oh well. Alright, I have five bombs. Yeah, this is the first time I, I have set foot in this dungeon. Well, not set foot. It, it'll be the first time I set foot anywhere past the foyer. That's what that's what this is, right? A foyer. This is how people decorate. They're oh these things. Oh, uh, I'm so mad at this enemy. <clears throat> it's called a a poles voice is the official name of it. P o l s v o i c e, which is a really weird name. It looks like a weird bouncing bunny head. According to the manual, it is. A ghost? Um, <clears throat> a ghost with big ears, and this is kind of an infamous enemy in The Legend of Zelda, which is why, you know, I can... These things take a long time to die, even with the White Sword. Holy crap. But yeah, this is an, an infamous enemy because the manual gives a hint to killing this enemy. And that hint is a lie for the for the US version of the game. The hint is that they hate loud noises. So you think, okay, once you get the flute, you think, okay, so I have to blow the flute and that's like their weak spot. That'll make them easier to kill. Dig Dogger hates certain kinds kind of sound. Okay, <clears throat> so that leads me to believe that um, I'll find the the flute in this dungeon and uh, the boss will be weak to it. Which adds to the expectation that the pole's voice, the manual says they hate loud noises. You think, oh, you find the flute here. That probably works on the pole's voice, but no. That hint is in there because it's a direct translation of the Japanese manual. And everyone, I apologize if everyone already knows this. Um, to anyone who, who doesn't know it, I hope you find it interesting. But the hint was in the Japanese manual because the second Famicom, Famicom controller, which was permanently attached to the, uh, to the machine, so they know that everyone playing would have the second controller. It had a microphone on it. And you could either kill that enemy or weaken it or something, do damage to it by blowing or yelling or whatever into the microphone. <clears throat> and obviously that wasn't a thing on the NES, but they you know, I, I assume the translators didn't know what that was referring to because it doesn't come out and say in the manual, blow into the microphone. It's, you know, it would be a fun thing to, to discover. And I guess Nintendo of America at that point, they, I mean, you know, it was the 80s. You can't just send an email and and ask for, for clarification. If they even thought that was a thing, they would need clarification. They probably thought that 
assume that referred to the flute too. And their playtesters probably just didn't catch it. Oops. <clears throat> but yeah, that, that's one of those things that's haunted me. Since, since my... You know, I was a curious and stubborn youth, and I really wanted to know what that meant, and why the manual was lying to me. Same for the anchor in Super Mario Bros. 3. Like, for the longest time, I assumed that the anchor didn't exist, because the only way to get it is by... You know, completing certain levels in Super Mario Bros. 3. Uh, getting all of the coins in, in the level. Which, I'm not going to do that. You know? Oh, can I stand in the, in the lava? And they can't hit me? Yeah. Because, as, as far as they're concerned, that's still a lava tile. Okay. Well, that makes these things a little easier to deal with. I believe that's a strategy I never hit upon playing the game as a child. Probably because it, re it requires patience. And I was curious and I was stubborn, but I was not patient. They take so many hits because they, they didn't re rebalance this enemy for the US version of the game. You know, you don't have the microphone. <clears throat> you can't defeat it that way, so, so you just have to hit it a billion times. Alright. I've been avoiding uh, going through locked doors just in case there's you know, an alternate path uh, by bombing rather than using a key, but I have more than enough keys, <clears throat> so I can probably start using them a little bit more liberally. And it's still providing me more keys, which is nice. I'm just going to leave the candle equipped. I'm not, I'm not boomeranging boomerang enough to justify <clears throat> switching back every time. I think I was expecting this dungeon to be worse th than it is because I was expecting this to be the first time you encounter Wizrobes. And Wizrobes suck. So I'm I'm almost at the the boss, which is interesting. Still haven't found the map. I did find the map, but it was in an inaccessible part of the room. I, I guess wizard robes don't show up until level 6. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was either 5 or 6. I'm starting to forget which walls I've tried bombing. Which was a problem in, in BOI too. So this will lead me to the map, <clears throat> and I won't be able to get through that shutter door until I find bombs. I assume, yeah. Aw, 
So Dongo hates smoke, but only the kind of smoke that comes from bombs. Not candles. I guess candles don't produce that much smoke. Right, yeah. <clears throat> I've already, uh... Okay, so that was a waste of a key, but that's okay. As far as darkness as a mechanic goes, I'm <clears throat> happy with the way this game does it. Like, it's dark for a second until you throw your candle, and that's it. You don't have to find your way around in the darkness. And the candle does have limited uses, but, uh, well, <clears throat> in, a, in, in a sense, you're, you're never going to need to use the candle more than once per screen, so it's effectively um, unlimited. For lighting up rooms, not for, uh, not for burning bushes. See, I'm killing, the, killing these mummies even though I don't have to. Because there's at least a chance that they'll drop something. Which makes it worth it. And they're not, like, super tough. It's not an extreme challenge. Ooh. Yes, please. <clears throat> I'm hoping some stuff starts dropping bombs. Because I would like to get into that shutter room before I fight the boss and leave. I don't know. I can always come back to the dungeon after I buy bombs, if I have to. <clears throat> now that I have the the blue ring, there's not really a lot else that I want to spend money on. I mean, I can buy the meat, which was, what, 60 or 80? Um, but I'd, like, I've never used the meat that much. Because it, it only works on certain enemies, and the enemies that it works on, I never saw the need to distract like that. Like, they're all pretty easy to kill. If I didn't have my, my blue ring, these things would be doing two hearts of damage apiece. Because with the ring, they, they do one. <clears throat> Very glad I found that. And that might be the reason I remember this dungeon being harder than it is. Because I didn't have the blue ring, you know, previously. <clears throat> in, in previous attempts. Oh, this looks like a bad room. Oh, this must be be Dig Dogger, right? Interesting that they would let me escape the boss room like that. Alright, so, yeah, I mean, that's the boss of the dungeon, so... Uh, I'm going to have to get the flute before I, before I fight it, I assume. I don't really have any other way of making noise in the game. Alright, so none of these blocks will be pushable. So what's the point of this room? I mean, bombing the walls and finding secrets, I guess.
Yeah, I'm, I'm sure <clears throat> none of the tools I have will be effective. Yeah, so I'm thinking I have to defeat the de defeat the Dodongos, and that'll lead me to the room with the flute. And then from there I can defeat the boss. Also, I want to try bombing my way into the eye again. I suspect that I, I, I suspect that any any dungeon that has a blank space on the map like that, uh, that's surrounded by other rooms, is going to be a secret. And there are a few other walls I want to try bombing. It's really mean of them to give you. Uh, Dodongos and not give you, n not have enemies drop bombs. And it's possible that, <clears throat> um, I got bombs as a reward for, for clearing a room, and I may have wasted them, uh, testing walls. But you know, I, di I didn't, didn't know there was gonna be Dodongos. Alright, that's where I found the map. Okay, well, I don't know where the closest bomb shop is, but give me a sec, I'll check the map. Like, if they could just make it likely that enemies will drop bombs, that would be nice too. Okay. Um, boy. This is going to be a trek. Oh well. <clears throat> I mean, at least this this dungeon is clear now. So Once I do get bombs, I'm not going to have to spend that much time on it. Okay. Like, I thought maybe uncovering more of the map would make that a shortcut or something. But it's not. Maybe it's a shortcut to, like, the, uh, the item room or, or something. I don't need you, fairy. You are free to fly away. Enjoy your freedom. And it's possible that there's a bomb shop closer that I just don't have access to because it's behind a bombable wall. Wait, I can just swing a sword to pick that up, right? Yeah. <clears throat> you don't need the boomerang. If it's, uh... If it's accessible with a sword swing. Okay, where am I? Okay. Sorry, I have to check my notes. Which one of these actually sells bombs? I feel like it has to be, there has to be a closer one that I just didn't write down. Because the only ones that sell bombs, it looks like, are like to the west across the river. There is a cave that I, that I didn't write down any notes for. Which I should have, like, like even if it's, if it's nothing. I should like make a note that there's nothing there, so so I don't 
do this, so, so I don't try it just in case there's something there, you know? Did I go too far? Crikey. Yeah, I, I did go too far. I should start using the dot more on the the mini map there. Yeah, I, I circled all the way back around to level two. Because some of the some some of these foresty areas can look pretty pretty similar. And if I use the dot, that'll, that'll give me a better idea of, like, the approximate position. Alright, what is in here? That is a bomb shop, okay. I don't know why I didn't write that down. Maybe that was before I thought to start writing stuff down. Okay, uh, I'm gonna pause just one moment, please. Okay, so this shop isn't like super convenient or anything, but it is closer than the other ones. Um, also note that the shopkeeper has changed into a fashionable silver tunic to match Link's. Link is quite the trendsetter. Oh, how I wish my maximum was not eight. I assume that never increases. Like, I know your wallet size never increases. That stays at 255. Okay. I just wanted to make absolutely sure. Ooh, that's, de that's desert. Well, do I want to go through the desert? Is that faster? Hang on. Yeah. <clears throat> I, th I think it te technically is faster, unless... You know, I get lost, which I don't think that's going to happen, but I associate deserts with sandstorms and lack of landmarks. Ah. Looking at my map. It's okay. I am protected. My blue ring protects me. So I'm going to take care of those Dodongos before I start bombing walls. Just make sure I, I have that out of the way. Wrong way. And I'm, I might just need one bomb to defeat them, like... My impression was that you had to feed the bomb to the Dodongo. And it took like two bomb- it, it took two bombs apiece. But the boss Dodongo I defeated, like it sure looked like I bombed it, it was stunned, and then I just killed it with my sword. Which I didn't think was possible. But it sure looks like that's what happened. Alright, let's see if I can get them all, like, clustered up. <laughs> and throw fire at them. Good job. A plus. Pro gamer moves. And that one, that one I fed. Okay. Ah! Okay, so it takes one fewer bomb. 
if you uh, if you don't feed them. I, I guess it's harder to hit them like that. Because it, it requires some amount of timing. And it's easier to just... M maybe that's why I, I always fed them bombs, because it was just easier than the alternative. What's up, Jelly Jams? Also, I'm glad it uh, it restored my bombs after I defeated them. That was nice of it. Ooh, a mummy was carrying a present. Several of them are. Dang, I should have. I should have quickly bombed some walls before I picked that up. Uh, uh. Nice. I was gonna bomb the south one too, but I was worried the bombs would disappear. Ooh, so many secrets. Could there be a third secret? I mean, there must, because that shutter isn't open yet, right? Um, or maybe that opens somewhere else. I think I've tried every direction here. Well, let's, let's put a pin in that. Oh, blue knights. That's not good. Oh, no. Like, they're faster. I'm sure they, they do more damage and take more hits. Ugh. Oh. Oh. Ah. Oh, that was a good bomb. B plus bomb placement. Yeah, there's always room for improvement. Yes, come here, fairy. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Ah. Okay. Flute. Ooh. The dungeons are getting more complicated. Wasn't wasn't there some something about killing all the bats in, in these areas? Like they drop hearts or something? I'm, I might be making that up. Two locked doors? Well, I have the solution to that problem. There was a lot of apocrypha about these kind of games, like a lot of rumor and speculation among the children that things worked certain ways because, you know, not 100% accurate uh, pattern recognition. I would like to have more bombs. Oh, I need two rupees. Oh, I would like so very much to have two bombs. Wait a sec. Oh, I, I guess this room is just not accessible via uh, conventional means. But it is a room on the map. I'm going to say there's not going to be anything outside of the bounds of the map. Like, there might be stuff internally in the internal spaces. Uh, but I, I doubt it's going to go like outside of what you see. No! 
No. Oh boy. I don't want to use bombs because that's a valuable resource right now. I can't shoot arrows because then it'll, it'll take me even longer to get the bomb upgrade. Yeah, I totally forgot that guy was a thing. And that's a secret thing. Like, you might not find that. It's quite possible that I didn't find it. As, as a youth. I hope when I pay for the the bomb upgrade, it gives me a full 16, 16 bombs. I assume it's 16. It might be 12. Oh, it might just be 10. I'd be disappointed if it's 10. I, I hope it's 16. I, I'll settle for 12. If it's 12, I will be... content. If it's sixteen, if it's sixteen, I'll be ecstatic. I still need one more rupee, though. Hmm. I tried bomb bombing that left wall, right? It was nothing. Oh, I should. My memory sucks. That's why I write everything down. But I can't write every single detail of every single dungeon, you know? I don't have time- Oh, I have to kill these things again? <laughs> no! Oh, I hate that. I hate that for me. Oh, I wish... I wish, I wish I had a hundred rupees. Before... I went back through that passage. I almost want to go buy bombs just to just to deal with the, the night room again. Of course, I would also need more more rupees as well. Well, now I have some bombs. Okay. Do these mummies respawn? No. I still don't know how to get back through the shutter. Oh, have I been in here? I don't know if I have. Yeah, I must have, because it's right next to the entrance. Yeah. Oh, that shutter might just be... permanently closed. Maybe you have to bomb your way... uh... you know, out of that room. So nothing happens if I just play the flute. Yeah. So I think the flute is only used to uh, weaken Dig Dogger and to open the level 7 dungeon. Um, and you can use it to teleport to the entrance of dungeons you've already been to. But that's not a super u use useful ability because as far as I know I don't have a reason to return to any of the previous dungeons of course it's another way to fast travel which is good without having to take the uh, the underground tunnels no so to stun to stun him you have to sort of like, it has to be near his face. Yeah, but if it's if it's in front of his face, then he'll just eat it. Which is effective, but not a, not as effective as stunning him. Hmm. Also, every time I do that little... Th the, the stun, it seems to drop bombs every time I do that. 
Hmm, tricky. Tricky. Crud. <sighs> okay, well, I have eight bombs. That's what I wanted. I wonder where you get the letter to show the old lady. Because I would very much like to be able to buy potions. Like, I know it's expensive, but... You know, I was saying I don't have anything else to spend my money on right now after acquiring the blue ring. So that would be something. Oh, that was a terrible bomb. Mm, bad. Okay, well, at least it's not a long trek. A long trek. Star Shrek. Is that a thing? So someone make that a thing. Star Shrek. That's all I got. Donkey LaForge? Okay. <clears throat> you know, I hold out hope that playing the flute will have some sort of effect on enemies or make my life easier in any way. I mean, it, it'll make my life easier when I want to get around because traveling to a dungeon will be <sighs> way better than walking to that part of the map in most cases. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Ah, that was good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Go away. Oh, phew. it would have been bad if I got hit to get a heart. Mm. No, no. Oh, I hate this enemy. Oh, have I mentioned I dislike this enemy? They're okay when I have. A lava river, lava river to stand on. Ah. Shit. Oh, I don't think I got hit. Nice. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, it probably they probably take longer to kill this way just because I have to be so careful. Like, wh when I have a lava river, it takes a long time to kill them, but... Like, it's so much safer. Like, I can just stand there and wait for them to walk by. <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna have to fight the boss with low health. But I'll, I'll at least try before... before going to a, uh, a fairy spring. Alright, have to do this before I die. Because <laughs> I don't want to have to fight the, those knights again. I would like to add more bombs. Okay, 12. I can be satisfied with that. It's not 16. But at least it's not 10. And it refilled my bomb bag. Very nice of it. Uh, 
I just wanted to double check that I. Okay. So. Was there a reason to kill these? No. Well, there was, because that was... Uh, that door originally was a shutter. But I already pushed the block, so no reason to, to fight them again. Alright, Dig Dogger, I'm coming for you. Actually, I have to pause for just one moment. Okay, back on track. I should, I should set a hotkey for, for pausing. That, that would make my life easier. It can't be the pause button because that pauses the emulator. Although I suppose I can go in and, and unset that hotkey. Well, <laughs> I mean, really that just puts me in this, the same place pretty much with more health, so. Good stuff. I mean, I don't want to have to fight the boss with three hearts, but maybe it'll be one of those situations where once I blow the flute, I just, uh, I just hit it with my sword and, and it's done. I kind of want to want to kill these just in case it, they drop fairies. Man, getting that... Getting that just right without feeding them the bomb is hard. <clears throat> I don't know if I've ever seen its expression <laughs> from, from that angle before. Wow, that, that was quite a face. Ow. That thing just tail me. Well, that cost me a lot of bombs, and I did not get much out of it. Uh, I think they don't drop anything when you when you feed them bombs. Which I guess makes sense. I mean, they, they dislike smoke, so if you just bomb near their face, like, they, they, they don't like it, they run away, and they, they drop their stuff. But if you actually feed them the bomb, then they explode, and all their stuff goes with them. Okay, I've been in that room. The, the room to the south, I, I meant, just testing to see if I should, uh, if I should try bombing. I know that there are cranky old men who will make you pay for door repairs, and I'm kind of surprised I, I haven't found one yet. And it's not that I want to pay for door door repairs, it's that if I'm missing that, I might be missing other stuff too. Which leads me to want to continue bombing every wall. Oh. I already have my candle out, okay. I love that strategy. Okay. I, th I thought I already, already tried that wall, but I wanted to be sure. Ah, oh, Monster Zoo. We've got bats, we've got mummies, we've got weird rabbit ghosts. Come on down to the Monster Zoo. If you like getting no treasure. Yeah, I can't hide from... from the bunny monster.
I don't use the official names of monsters if I think the name sounds dumb. Like, Paul's voice. What What even is that? I mean, I assume it's like a mis mis mistranslation or mistransliteration of, of a Japanese, uh, you know, term or, that's more meaningful. Uh, but I don't, I don't know what that, what the Japanese one is, so... I'll call them bunny monsters, bunny ghosts, bunny slimes. Oh, now I get a clock. <sighs> I, sh I shouldn't have fought all those monsters. I didn't have to. Like, yeah, some of them might drop stuff, but that wasn't worth it. These mummies, on the other hand, I can deal with mummies. I like how in the manual, uh, hang on, let me, let me lift this up. Uh, I, I like the phrasing when they talk about the mummy monster, because they have like a little description of, of each of the enemies. Uh, let me find the dungeon monsters here. Uh, all right, so, so the name of the monster is Gibdo, and the paragraph, the, the first sentence of the paragraph is, the Mummy Man. Yeah, does what it says on the tin. Gibdo, the Mummy Man. He's got some strange powers and some pretty powerful attacking force. I haven't, I haven't seen evidence of either of those things. Powers or attacking force. I mean, may, maybe when it does hit me, it does a relatively large amount of damage. But... It does, I haven't noticed. The Mummy Man. Oh, I don't want to fight these. Alright, Dig Dogger. I hope the amount that you dislike loud noises is 100%. Dang, it's not just a one-hit kill after that. Fudge. Oh, I don't like this. <sighs> oh boy. Okay, well, I'm thinking bomb, bombs and healing spring. Which, now that I have the... Oh, the flute. Might make that easier. Is there a dungeon that's like right next to a bomb shop and a healing spring? Like that, that would own. Not really. <laughs> well. Hmm. I mean, it's definitely faster to work back to level one than it is to, to walk there and back. That's not level 1. I thought it would just wrap around. What is that, level 4? Yeah, it's going in like reverse order. Yeah, that's, that's level 2. Wait. That's level 3. That's level 4 again. Is it random? Hold on. That's level 4. It's- it's random. Why would it be random? <laughs> oh, that's... That's bad. I appreciate it giving me a fairy right off the bat, though. So, oh. Well, 
Also, I thought there were shops that sold hearts for like 10 rupees. I thought that was a thing. That might not be a thing until later games. Okay, so I want to go... Ugh, it's still pretty far. I don't know. I guess it's not that bad. I mean, I'm disappointed now that I know... I just have to keep trying the whistle until it takes me to the dungeon I want. That could prob probably be more efficient. So if I go north from here, that takes me to the fairy spring. And then here's here's the bomb shop. Well, it, do it doesn't matter if I take damage here, because I can just immediately go to the, fa the fairy spring. In fact, I think I will do that... ...to restore the invisible fraction of health I just lost. Thank you. Oh, also, that's a safe place to use the, uh, the warp whistle. Come on, five. It's not five, is it? No. No, that's two. Five is also surrounded by statues like that, and you approach it from the south. I think five is brown. Why can't all the dungeons be inviting tree stumps? And five wouldn't have an octorock next to it. That's like three or two or something. That's four. Well, this flute is less impressive than I had hoped. Yeah, that's two. That's two again. This sucks, man. Now it's just... It's flipping me back and forth between one and two. Is there some, like, hidden variable? Like, does it take me to the closest dungeon in the direction I'm facing? Because if that's the case, this should take me to five. And it took me to... I mean, I don't know what other hidden variable it could be. You know, I'm not someone who can do, like, RNG manipulation or anything. Maybe it's the opposite direction to the direction you're facing? So that's two. Crud. <clears throat> when I was facing north, it took me to three. And all those times it took me to one, I think I was facing south. So let's try facing north. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. I was facing north when I tried to go to five last time. Try facing west. Aw. One ride per ticket? Alright, facing west, it took me to three. I think this is a fool's errand. I think it's just random. Three again. Four. 
for... I don't like how this turned out. Come on! I should have just walked the last time I was at one. Whoa. It like ch changed the direction my, my sword shot. I wonder if that's a hint. I mean, it can't be. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I bet it's only dungeons that, that, that I've completed. Not dungeons that I found. <sighs> Alright. Good. Took me, back, took me back to one. That's the fastest way to get back there. Ah, that makes it even less useful. I mean, the, the description in the manual is complete nonsense. It says... Uh, hang on. Like, it, it is not translated the way it should be. Um, let's see here. Oh, never mind. A really mysterious magical item. Use it and it'll amaze you with what it can do. I thought it said something else. Yeah, I thought it gave some other hint about the whistle. Or the flute. Or the, or the recorder. You know, whatever. Um... Okay, well, never mind. Uh, let me get back, back to the map here. some of the hints are in some out-of-the-way out places in the documentation. Okay. Yay, I blocked it. I mean, I don't know if bombs are even going to be effective against this thing. Like, I don't think I hit it with a bomb. And it's going to be difficult trying to hit it with a bomb. Because it moves so fast. I hope that works. Yeah, I, I remember what the whistle does pretty clearly because I thought how cool it was that there was a reference to... Well, actually, I, I don't know. Mario 3 came out after this, right? So, yeah, the whistle in Mario 3 is a reference to The Legend of Zelda. Of course, I didn't, I didn't play the games in that order. Uh, I, for, I forget which one I played first, but... I, I didn't get my Nintendo games until, you know, years after they were both out. I think I had Zelda first. I, th I think Zelda was one of the first N Nintendo games I got. Um, but I thought it was cool that there's a warp whistle in both. 
and they, they both play the same tune. I thought that was really cute. You, you don't see a lot of that kind of thing these days. A lot of crossover references. Like, they, tell, they, they take Zelda super seriously, and they don't, uh, you know, they don't play with it as much as they used to. Also, in the manual for this game, uh, when you, when it describes the, the name registration, the example names on the screen are Nintendo, Mario, and Luigi, which I thought that was cute too. Alright, at least I don't have to fight any blue knights to get back to the boss. At least I don't think I do. Now that I got the bomb upgrade, I think I'm done with that whole section. That's, that's another enemy that I know the name of, but I think it's dumb, so I call it something else. The, the Dark Nut. Like, is that a, a mistransliteration of Knight? I, like, I don't think it would be. The, the syllables are pretty distinct in Japanese. Okay, nearly full health, nearly full bombs. Let's put this thing through its bases. Okay, it flashed. That was a hit. Oh, thank god. These things are still spitting fireballs at me. That is so unfair. Alright. Well. Yeah, now that I ha now that I have the Triforce, I'm sure I can uh teleport back here. But for now, uh I have an extra heart container. Or one more heart container than I had before. So I wanna go see if I can get the Master Sword. And then after that, I think I'm going to call it for this episode. Um, so yeah, the, the qu quickest way would be on foot. N none of the other dungeons would be closer. So let's we go, amigo. Speaking of Dig Dogger. One of my pseudonyms for a while on social media websites where it's popular to change your display name occasionally. You know, on, on Twitter like websites, you have like a, a Halloween name or, or a Christmas name. It's like a fun thing you can do. Uh, at one point, my name was based on a meme in which you com combine the name of two lesser known N Nintendo characters. Uh, it's not a, not a real meme, I made it up. Which, I mean, all, all memes are made up, you know. But no one, um, you know, followed. But that's okay. Uh, but my, my name was Tibby Dig Dogger. From Tibby, uh, the, not the protagonist, um, because the player is the protagonist, but the the main sidekick of, uh, your sidekick in, uh, Rhythm Heaven Megamix. Where am I going? I got so sidetracked. I think I can make my way back to, to where I was going. Have I been in this part of the map? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I noted that down. It was on my, my wall map, not my PDF map. Wait. There's a question mark. That was the...
I, I know I did this. I, sh I should have written this down, whatever it is. Oh, I remember. It wasn't a real meme. It was a joke based on the actress uh, Daisy Ridley. And it wasn't like it wasn't lesser known Nintendo characters. It was like second tier Nintendo characters or, or something. Because you have Daisy from you know Super Mario Land, etc. And you have Dig Dogger, which is a lesser known Zelda enemy. Anyway, that's that's the joke. Daisy Ridley is her name is that meme, and I came up with uh, with Tibby Dig Dogger. What is the, what is the question mark here for? I don't know. Oh, it was the it was a bracelet. That's where I got the bracelet. I'm writing that down. Okay, I apologize everyone. Like, my, my memory is bad enough as it is when I start telling extremely relevant and important stories. Uh, it makes it harder to keep stuff straight. Alright, that's the old lady. Which I still, I still don't know where you get the letter. I might check real quick and see if that's a hint on the map anywhere. Uh, there we go. Have I mastered using it? Is is eight hearts enough? No. Boo. Oh well. Let's clean up some ghosts while I'm here. What a fascinating mechanic that is. Like, I'm, I'm sure as a kid, I just found it weird and didn't realize the reason behind it from like a game design perspective. I was like, whoa, these ghosts are f weird. Why do they... Why do they do that? I'm not fighting these ghosts, lol. Or maybe I did realize that this is a good way to acquire stuff. Alright, uh, one, one more thing I want to do before I call it. I'm not going to start another dungeon, but I will... ...revisit the old lady who sells the hint. I just need two more rupees first. Which shouldn't be that hard. Maybe she'll tell me where to get the letter. Oh, come on. Two rupees? Can't give me two rupees. Boy, grave robbing just ain't what it used to be. Thank you. Boy, that, uh, the whole Daisy Ridley ta tangent, that might be the dumbest thing I have ever explained out loud. Like, I make lots of jokes like that on social media, but having to, uh, <laughs> having to, to explain the whole thing, like, I, I don't, re I don't regret it, like, I think it was a funny joke. No, I went the wrong way. Wait, no, you, you can't get to the old lady this way. Anyway, follow me on Mastodon at cyber spelled c y b r e dot space cyber dot space with with the r and the e reversed slash at sign. 
matt, M-A-T-T, cyber.space slash at matt. And if you don't have Mastodon, uh, get on Mastodon. It rules. It's like Twitter, but, but way better. Uh, go to joinmastodon.org for uh, more information about that whole business. For more amazing jokes like the one I just explained. I had a brief second where I was like, I wonder if it's going to troll me and make one of the other ones the correct one. But I, I didn't think that was likely and I didn't, I didn't want to jinx it. <sighs> okay, well, let's at least try the 10. I'm sure it's, it's probably going to be the 30, right? I don't know if I want to grind out 30 rupees right now. But I can at least get 4 and try the, try the 10. That's not going to be enough for her to talk, but I can at least eliminate it as an option. And then the next time I have 30, I can make, make my way back here. If these moblins would stop being so stingy. I mean, I, I can't even be mad. That, that's a really good troll. I am impressed. It won't take long for me to find four rupees. Oh no. Why, that's that's a number that will drop instantaneously. Oh, I guess I can go on ahead and do this. Even though I'm not ready for it yet. Yeah, I remember this taking us forever to figure out when I was a kid. I don't think we saw the hint or understood the hint on the map about that lake. And I don't remember how we eventually solved it. Maybe it just took us forever to, to, to see that hint. Or to realize what it was saying. Well, no, because if we saw the hint, we, we would have gone there and just tried everything, including the flute. But yeah, we, we must not have seen it. note i think that will about do it for this episode uh tune in ne next time when we might find enough rupees to get that lady to help what what a what a shitty thing to do i give her more than she wants and she refuses to help me Like, I'm generous. I go above and beyond what was being asked of me. Oh. Alright, well. Let's get lost in the woods. Oh, actually, there is one thing I want to try real quick, but it, it requires pausing the recording. Uh, one moment. 
Okay, so there's a thing in the manual that says you can end the game by pressing A on controller 2 and the control pad. Which is interesting because normally if I want to save the game I have to die on purpose. But if you have a second controller, apparently you can end the game that way. I, I, don't, I don't know why they made it a weird code, but I'm going to try it. I, I just mapped all the, the player 2 controls to my controller here. That's not button A. Do I have to press them at the same time? Do I have to pause? Ah! Okay, well there we go. Apparently I, I only died four times in that video. I have eight hearts, which is close to half of the maximum, I think. It's, it's 20, right? It sure looks like there's space for 20. I bet I have to have 10 before I can get the magic sword. That would make sense. And I have no idea where to find the the non-dungeon heart containers. Um, but, you know, no, no hints please. I want to at least try to find them myself. I bet it will involve bombing a bunch of random walls. How much you want to bet? Of course, I have, tw I have uh, you know, a big old 12 bomb bag now, so... That'll be... Less... Of a frustrating task. Uh, or I might just finish the game with, uh, you know, well, no, because I need the, uh, I don't even have enough money to gamble. Like, I'm not going to finish the game without the magic sword. Like, that won't be a thing. So yeah, I'm going to have to find some of the hidden ones. But that's okay. Uh, I can always I can always do some off-screening too. That's the nice thing about uh, doing this as recordings rather than live. Um, I can do all of the, the boring, tedious stuff uh, you know, on my own time without having to make y'all watch it. So I might do that. Or I might not if people want to see that stuff. Oh well. Anyway. You can just continue. Well, I, I guess if you want to work back to the, the starting screen, that's one way to do it. Okay, sorry for the long post-amble, but I will see you all later. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.